Today, we're gonna to show you how to delete any object in Photoshop with one click. Hey there, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. Today, we're gonna to show you the one click delete and fill. That's a brand new feature in Photoshop 2022 as a part of our object selection tool. Not only that, we're gonna show you how to replace a sky. Here we are in Photoshop. We've got this beautiful landscape and I wanna just get rid of this house and these objects here. So we're gonna be using our object selection tool and the brand new one click fill and delete. So let's go ahead and start by duplicating our background. I'm gonna hit Control or Command J, that way I can get back to my background at any time. Now we're gonna be using our object selection tool right over here under the marquee tool. It's gonna to be W for the magic wand. Now this tool has been in Photoshop for a while, but it just got some recent updates and it's much, much better. So with our object selection tool, we have all of the options right up here. Basically, you wanna turn on object finder. You can reload, it's gonna search your image over and over again. Now this little icon will actually show you what is selectable in your image. So it's gonna find all the objects for you. And here you can see how they actually display. You can see my color is magenta. That's why everything's showing up magenta there. There we go. Now you can click with basically just a rectangle, simply click, or you can lasso to circle around the object you'd like to select. And you can choose to sample all layers, whether or not you want a hard edge. And if you're selecting a subject, this is a cool option. You can choose it to like process on your device or in the cloud will it actually give you better results, but you do have to be connected to the internet to do that. Okay, now let's check this out. With this new tool, all I have to do is basically hover over anything that I want to delete. And you can see it's selecting my foreground, it's got that house, it's got the background, it's working really well and this tool is getting better and better over time. So basically, if I wanna select my house, I just hover over and click on the house and as you can see, I've got my selection now is active. So there's a brand new tool called Delete and Fill and you can access this in two different ways. If you're on a Mac, you can simply hit Alt or Option and hit Delete and boom, it's it's gone, you can see. So I selected it and it's gone. So there we go, let's just again, click on it again so we can see Alt or Option Delete. Now also in the documentation, they've shown us that Shift Delete will work as well. So if I hit Shift Delete, uh, this is actually for me bringing up the Content Aware Fill dialog. So the Fill dialog, and then you can click on Content Aware. And this works also, there we go. You're gonna see it's gonna fill this with Content Aware and then Control or Command D to deselect. So in this case, this didn't work as well. So I'm gonna hit undo a couple of times and we're gonna use the option delete and then control or command D to deselect. Okay, so you can see that worked incredibly well. Whichever keyboard shortcut you work, you use, uh, it depends on like your specific setup and the documentation. I'm sure this is gonna change over time as well. So you can see the house is gone and we're looking really, really good. Now you can actually get to this tool in other ways as well. Let's say you just have like a lasso tool. I'm gonna to grab my regular polygonal lasso tool, okay? And we're gonna zoom in and I wanna get rid of this house here. So we're just gonna like kind of select over here. There we go, make a little selection right there. Let's zoom in so you guys can see what we're doing. Now you can also get to this same exact feature by right clicking and then going down to where it says delete and fill selection. There we go, delete and fill selection. And then boom, you can see it deletes and fills it. And this is using content aware technology, which is also, by the way, just getting better and better over time. So we're gonna do the same thing with this house. We're gonna right click and go down to where it says delete and fill selection. There we go. And then I wanna just do the same thing with this little like brick wall looking thing right over here. Fantastic. All right, let's make that selection, right click, and then gonna to go to delete and fill selection right there and then there we go, we can see, looking good. Now, okay, here we're gonna put on our super duper glasses. Um, is this perfect? Like, did it give me exactly the results that I want? Um, you can kind of see a little bit of the house here remaining, right? There's like a little bit of the house is, is still there. And also content where uh, Phil, like which is the shift delete tool, it works pretty well, but like if you're super, super zoomed in, you're gonna see where maybe some t some areas like it didn't work. Let's just turn this off and on. Where like it looks a little bit fuzzy here and like it's not always exactly what you would want, okay? So in my opinion, this is like a really great starting place, but sometimes you're just gonna wanna go and fix it up. Like if we're super zoomed out, no one's ever gonna see that. But as you zoom in and you want more professional results, I recommend creating a new layer and then you can just use tools like the clone stamp tool. So I'm gonna hit S for the clone stamp tool. Up at the top, 
where it says sample, just be sure to hit current and below. So it's going to sample the current layer and anything below it. And we can hold alt or option. There we go. And simply sample an area and start painting it in until we have a little bit more of like the results that we actually want. Again, these automatic tools are fantastic. They're getting better and better with every single release. But sometimes we still have to do a little bit of our own like, you know, manual work to just make sure everything looks really, really good. And with all the recent advances in artificial intelligence and machine learning that are coming to Adobe, this, these tools are just going to get better and better and better. But for now, we do have like a little bit of cleanup if we're looking for professional level results, in my opinion. And this is going to vary uh, depending on which examples you're using, what sample images and things like that. But sometimes we still have a little bit of cleanup that we want to do. Here we're doing this with the clone stamp tool. Now up here, we see a little bit of this edge. For this, we're going to grab our next tool called the spot healing brush tool. Up here, just make sure sample all layers is checked. And then you can simply like just paint over the thing you want gone. And this tool does a really good job. And I'm just using my trackpad on my laptop right now. So you can see you don't need any special tools. This is, you know, very available, very easy to use. And this tool is getting better and better over time. So this shift and delete, it's, it's super cool. You can see it did the majority of the job for us. The object selection tool is really, really improved from the last iteration. Um, but we still have a little bit of cleanup. So I anticipate this getting a little bit better as we move into the future. Now, in this case, I think we're looking pretty good. Everything looks nice and cleaned up. And I want to turn this into like a legit landscape. So we're going to use another fantastic feature in Photoshop. And this is just going to be our sky replacement. So what we're going to do is I'm going to just click on these two layers. We're going to click on those and hit Control or Command E just to merge them together. Because the sky replacement works better when you have like a nice layer that's full of content. OK, uh, it doesn't work that great when you're on a blank layer, for instance. So let's go to our layer two. Um, and we're going to give you some cool tips and tricks for making your sky replacements look real. So I'm going to go to edit. And then we're going to go down here to where it says sky replacement. Now, keep in mind this original sky, it's a little bit of a cloudy sky. We definitely do have a light source here, but it's it's pretty cloudy sky, and we don't have a ton of contrast in this image. So we're going to go to sky replacement. Now, there's a sky here that uh, we're actually including with your download. So if you want to get it, you just follow the link right down below. But basically, here's how, here's how this works. Um, just go to this My Skies folder, and then you can click on this little plus icon, and then navigate to this. So this is included in the download, so just follow the link right down below you'll get the sample image so you can follow along. And then you'll get this sky as well. So this sky here looks really good. Let's go ahead and hit open there. It's just going to add it to the, our my skies. And then it's permanently in Photoshop, which is fantastic. Now, with this, uh, the sky is super cool because it comes with this little move tool. So I can just kind of like move it around and see how it fits in my image. Uh, you can flip this left and right. There we go to kind of see what works better. You can scale this up. And I think that's looking pretty good. Now, of course, you can kind of like fade your edge in and out depending on like how things are actually blending together. There we go. And with these sliders, it's kind of like just put it to the left, put it to the right and see what works. Now, I suggest outputting this to new layers. So we're going to hit OK. I'll put this to new layers. And then now what I want to do, this guy looks OK, but it's not really like perfectly blended in with my image. Because if I make this invisible and visible again, you can see that the original sky is like really low contrast, right? I don't see much detail. But the new sky has a ton of contrast. So it's just not looking real. So what I need to do is I need to take this new sky and I need to lower the contrast. And we can do that with a levels adjustment layer. So we're going to go ahead and open up this new this sky replacement group. I've got the skies right here. Fantastic. So what we're going to do is create a levels adjustment layer right on top of this. So we're going to go to layer, down to new adjustment layer, and over here to levels. There we go. Levels. Let's hit OK. Now we want to make sure we click on this little icon right here in the levels property dialog. That's going to clip it. You can see it pushes it over to the right and we get a little down arrow. So we have it unclipped, clipped, unclipped, clipped. And that just makes sure it's only going to affect the layer underneath it, which in this case is the sky. OK. In this case, I just need to lower the contrast. Super easy to do. So I need to take my brights and bring them down. And I need to take my darks and bring them up. So we're lowering the contrast here. So our brights are right over here, this bottom slider. And our darks are over here on the bottom slider. So we're just going to take our dark point and we're going to bring that from the left to the right. And then we're going to take our lights and we're going to bring that from the right to the left. And we're just going to find a nice balance. Again, you want to try to find something that's like kind of similar to the original sky. 
as I turn this off and on, you can see it's looking a lot better, right? There's the before and there's the after, right? Because the skies in our photos light the photos themselves, right? So we want, when we do the sky replacement, if you do something that is like a totally different level of contrast, like the before option, it just doesn't look very realistic. So in the after, we still have more detail in here, but it looks a lot more realistic. Now I'm just gonna turn this whole thing off and on. We can see we have a little bit of like blue, a little bit of green in that sky. So we can do that with our levels adjustment layer as well. Just be sure to click right here on your levels adjustment layer. We're gonna go where it says RGB. We're gonna go to our blue channel and then just grab this middle slider right over here. And we're just gonna move that a little bit to the left. You can see it just put some blue in that sky, okay? A little bit of blue and then we're gonna go to our green channel and I'm gonna put a little bit of green in there too. There we go. And now we can see the color matches a lot better and the contrast matches a lot better. So there's the before and there's the after with our sky replacement. So it's gonna really open up the amount of skies that you can actually use for sky replacement. And the fact that now we can match them a little bit better looks fantastic. So let's go ahead, we're just gonna turn both of these, let's turn these properties windows off. Let's turn both of those layers off. There we go, there they are off and then back on again. Fantastic, and we can see we've removed all of the objects from our photo and did a sky replacement, and now we've got a beautiful landscape. To get more free Photoshop videos, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to leave me a comment and let me know what you would like to learn in Photoshop. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Thanks for hanging out. I need the friends. I love you guys. Learn you later. <laughs> Bye everyone.